I am Cullen from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover of the Bailey Autograph Approach 740. So as we start the walk around on the driver's side of the vehicle first, the first point you get to is your mains connection point. So to hook the vehicle up, what you need to do is get your hooker blade, lift the collar, lift the flap on the van, slide it over here so it hooks on to the vehicle. Hook the vehicle first, then the power source and do it in reverse order when unhooking the vehicle so that you're never walking around with a live lead in your hand and push the blue clip in the corner, left hand corner down to release the pins in the hooker blade to allow the hooker blade to be safely taken off the vehicle. To fill the vehicle with water, this is your water filling point. So you've got to fill via an adapter. So this is the adapter here. So this end goes into here. So push it in. This end clips onto your hose pipe tap. So carry a hose pipe connection because it's mainly just a brass tap you'll need the screw on bit to clip this into on the tap on site and this is how you'd fill the vehicle with water you can fill it fill it via a submersible pump as well but that's mainly for caravans you'd more use this on a motorhome because you'll be pulling past the water bay hook, fill the vehicle and then you would park up on your site so that's your wheel filler there LPG, liquid petroleum gas, so it's previously had a gas flow system fitted, but this is now redundant, so it now takes bottles again. So, so now opening the LPG locker, pressing the both buttons together releases the door. You've got space for two six kilogram gas bottles. So one at the back, one at the front. Once you get the bottle on board, you'll want to strap it in just so that it's safe and secure when you're on the road. So strap the bottle in is the first thing you'll do. And then you want to connect the pigtail. So the pigtail goes between the bottle and the regulator. So it's a left hand thread with it being gas. So left to tighten, right to loosen, hand tighten the pigtail and then turn the bottle on and off from the top of the cylinder and then should one be empty just change the bottles around and put your empty at the back and put on or just connect the pigtail to the bottle at the back so that's your gas system vision plus external tv point so it's a an f type fitting which works if they've got a aerial or a satellite you can connect so that you're not using yours on the vehicle behind the back driver's wheel is your wastewater outlet so open this here open the valve you can allow the waste out of here so drive over the grid open the valve drain off all your waste water so this is anything that you've put down a plug hole but you want to make sure in the winter that this point is fully drained down as you wouldn't want the water to freeze and normally on the way out of your site you would drive over the grid let the water out anyway from the waste disposal point so that you're not carrying dirty water around with you because it'll impact your payload it'll impact how much fuel you're going to use and obviously you could make it overweight if you've packed the van for a good trip so take the water out because you don't need to carry this with you so at the back you've got your toilet to operate your toilet so you've got a separate header tank so all the locks on the outside of the vehicle open with the Bailey key this is where you would put your pink solution because it's a flush, it's a header tank. It's similar to a caravan. You put your pink liquid in and then you'd put either carry a watering can or a large jug and tip some water into here and fill the system of your toilet with chemical. 
So that's your flush. Underneath here, you've got your cassette, which also takes chemical. So to get the cassette out, you lift the orange handle and slide it out the vehicle. You've got a handle so you can drag it to the waste disposal point when it's heavy instead of carrying it. And then to empty, what you need to do is you need to take the green cap off. Push the button and tip out. Once you've tipped the content of the cassette out, put some water in, because there's normally a tap there. So put some water in the cassette, give it a shake and tip out again. And then you would either put, you put your blue or green liquid in here, or you can put it in the measuring, which is 120 milliliters into there, pop it into here, and then it's good to go back into the vehicle. So it's up to you if you pour it down the neck or you want to measure it out. You might just want to do a rough guess. And that tips back in there. Coming around the back of the vehicle, we've got your high level brake light, your reversing camera, two bars where the back panel's been strengthened to take a bike rack. So if you ever want one fitted in the future, you can. Storage underneath the bed. You've got underneath bed storage and you've got your carpets. Vent for allowing the fumes out of the Aldi boiler when operating on gas. Two fridge vents. A diesel filler on the side of the passenger door which opens with the main Peugeot Boxer key, this one here. Tire pressures on here, so this is cold tire pressure, so always check your tires when they're cold. And they are 55 on the front and 80 psi on the back. Engine battery lives underneath the cab floor, so should you ever need to charge it, change it, lift this panel off and you'll be able to get to the top of the battery. Underneath the passenger seat is the location of your toolkit. So it has a jackknife bracing and a tornai. And then your bonnet release is on the side of the dashboard. So underneath the bonnet, you've got your fluids. So you've got your screen wash in the back corner, which is the main one you're gonna need. Followed by the power steering fluid, the coolant, the brake fluid, the oil filler, and dipstick. And then for giving or receiving a jump start as the battery's underneath the cab floor, you've got your positive terminal here, and you've got your negative terminal there. So you'd earth off the side of the headlight, which is a bolt there, put your positive on here. And then you've got your weight plate, so three and a half ton gross vehicle weight. If you weren't ever fit the tow bar to this, you can tow up to five and a half ton, which is the motorhome, whatever you're towing. Can't exceed that, so you can put a two ton trailer behind this vehicle to operate the main 12 volt control panel so first of all if you hooked up you'll get this little wire which shows a picture of the cable in the top left hand corner which means you're receiving 230 mains voltage and then you would turn the vehicle off and on via the master switch should you have enough water on board you can turn the pump on which will Pressurise the flow of water to your taps, toilet and shower. You've got your master switch for your lights, which is just here. And then they all are individually switched around the van. And you've got the light for the owner light on the outside of the vehicle. Going left and right with a scroll at the bottom, you can view your water level. So there's 100% of fresh water on board at the moment. Zero waste. If you were using a pump and you wanted to do it internal tank fill, you would just press enter on here and turn this on and off. Exterior temperature and then you can go in the user guide here and then you've got your internal temperature. Your selective battery always wants to say leisure because the leisure battery is the battery that's designed to run the habitation side of the vehicle. Should that say vehicle, 
you need to press enter and change that and then you've got your leisure battery amps currently being used and the leisure battery voltage top of your Aldi heating and hot water panel so you need to turn it on here and then press menu and at the top you've got a house with a thermometer in this is how hot you want the inside of your motorhome so you can adjust that with the plus and the minus and it will go all the way up to 30 degrees max so adjust the temperature to how you want it and then underneath So should you want hot water, you'd go to half a bar, like so, and that'll give you hot water and heating, should you have the heating on. If you don't, if you want the hot water first and you want to prioritise the hot water, put it to a solid bar, and what that'll do is, it will Heat the water first, as the water has the priority, but if you want it heating in hot water, just make it hot half a bar. And then underneath, you've got the electric. So if you're on a site, use their electric. That's what you've paid your site fee for. So you've got off one kilowatt, which is 750 watts. Two kilowatts, which is 1500 watts. Or three kilowatts so normally you'd use one kilowatt on smaller CL sites and abroad two kilowatts in this country and then some super sites will let you use three but if you're using the microwave or you're using anything that's a high voltage appliance at the same time as this is on two or three just knock it down otherwise you could trip the motor home because you could overload it with how much it's running then if you were while camping and you had no other way of heating your water or the vehicle, you'd be using your gas. So you would just knock the gas on there and turn it off there. But you can have the electric and the gas on together should you be in desperate need or be away in the winter and you're in a need for hot water or you're sitting in a cold, in the cold motorhome and you want to get it up to temperature when you've just arrived. Put the gas and electric on together, give it 10-15 minutes, then turn the gas off and allow the electric side to continue to heat the motorhome. So the last owner of this vehicle has fitted a satellite system to the vehicle. So to operate the satellite system, the box at the back, you press the on button. It'll start down, it'll count from 5 to 1. And then you'll hear the satellite start whizzing around on the roof as it's finding Astro 2. So all you need to do is press it once to put it up, press and hold to put it down, it'll retract the dish. Turn your box on, get your remote for your box, plug your telly in, HDMI. So to get your satellite to work, Put your source on your telly to HDMI and then it'll bring in as many channels as the satellite can find on here. And you've also got your solar charge controller there at the back so it's charging the leisure battery off the solar panel off the roof when the vehicle is sitting. But obviously when it's hooked up the charger unit's putting the majority of charge into your battery so the solar panel goes to sleep. And then it'll come up here saying sat found, it's locked on. And then you just control it through your max view box. In the kitchen area, you've got your four burners. Three of them are gas, one of them is electric. So the electric side is this one here, which illuminates red. But that'll only work when on mains power. So you've got to be hooked up for that to work. Failing that, you've got three gas. So three gas rings, allow all the hubs 
to cool so they're cool enough to touch before putting the glass lid down otherwise you can shatter it and it tells you there caution glass lid may shatter when heated turn off all burners and grills before shutting the lid underneath you do have your grill you may want to take this out or wrap it up when travelling as it can cause some vibration when on the road and underneath that you've got your oven under your oven got this panel here so you've got some storage but red isolation taps these are gas isolation valve taps any problems with gas turn the bottle off to be safe these are mainly for when the vehicle is annually habitation serviced but it tells you there how to turn them on and off and what does what storage see that's the plug there for your electric hot plate at the back on the floor there slide out veg racks for storage and a tray cutlery tray in the top storage shelves underneath the sink and as long as your pump's on purging the water through there so this is what will happen if you've drained your boiler off and you're putting the water back in so you've just got to let it do its thing as you start to turn it at the hot you'll start to cough and sprut and you'll hear the water until you get a free flow of water this is when you know that your boiler is then full so it's being drained down this is what it'll, it'll do when you after the winter once you've drained it down and you want to use it again so there you go so you're starting to get a free flow of water there that's the water getting pressurized so it just does take a few minutes that's your water system working two 230 volt sockets your lights for your kitchen on that little switch there storage storage and more storage to operate your Dometic fridge so it's off at the top that's the fridge off not in use and then your next setting is a picture of a plug picture of a plug is mains hookup so it'll act as a 230 household fridge now so you'd use this if you were on a site or if you were parked on the drive and you are prepping the van to go away a few days before your trip you'll want to hook the van up to charge your leisure battery then you'll also want to put your fridge on so that it pre chills your fridge so that the day before you can go off in the car bring the shopping back to the van fill your fridge the fridge is cold you'd leave your shopping in overnight to pre to cool down and then when you're ready to travel and you've got shopping in the fridge you'll put on the battery setting the battery setting works off the engine alternator and it sends a 12 volt feed to the fridge so the fridge acts as a giant cool box and keeps your shopping nice and fresh until you arrive on your site and you go back to electric or you turn down to gas but the battery setting will only keep it at the same temperature it was at so it will not cool it anymore but it will not get it any warmer so it will just keep your shopping nice and edible and fresh until you arrive back on site and you go back to hook up or you go all the way down to gas this is your temperature here so push your temperature in push your spark ignition in and you want that orange band to go into the green once that's gone into the green
If you haven't had the gas on for a while, pull it through on the hob first, prime the lines, then it might just take a couple of goes, like there, and now it's moving. So that's in the green there, you can let go, and that is lit on gas, so you'd use gas if you're wild camping. Large fridge freezer with freezer box. What you'll want to do is when you're not using the van, or you're storing it, or you're winterizing it, you need to take, you want to leave the door open. So you want to take all your bits and pieces out, leave the essentials in there, the sealed cans and bits and pieces that you want to keep in there, the long life stuff. But leave the door open. So either leave it open like this, or what you can do is you can little toggle on the light, pulls these two pins out, you can rest that up upon it, keeps the door. Obviously the door's not shut. You can see in there it allows air circulation in and out of the fridge to stop mould from growing in there and trapping the air in the motorhome from smelling. 800 watt sharp microwave above. You've got to be hooked up for this to work, otherwise it will not work because it's a mains household appliance. If you lift your French bed, underneath you have this, the area where you can store your freestanding table, which is just like putting an ironing board up with two legs, pressing these to drop it back down on both sides and storing it back in here while you're travelling. Carpets are in there, but at the back you've got your boiler. So your boiler heats your water, heats your vehicle, so under here gets really warm, so if you've got any bedding or anything you want to store under here, you can store it when the boiler's on under here, it'll be warm, but you want to make sure that you drain this off in the winter, because it holds 10 litres of water, and if we experience bad frost like we do in the winter, the water could freeze and potentially break this system. And this system is very expensive and it isn't covered under warranty because frost damage is your responsibility to drain the vehicle down. So to drain it down, you go down beside the boiler, you've got a yellow toggle, which is known as your drain down toggle. It is lying down at the moment, which means it's holding 10 litres. If you stand that up, 10 litres of water will start draining directly out underneath the chassis. You would leave that stood up during the time the vehicle was not in use over the winter so that no water has any way of staying in the boiler. You'd open your fresh, which is through the floor, which I'll show you in a minute. Open your waste from outside, open all your taps in the middle position to stop any air buildups or any water from sitting in any taps or any pipelines and they'll just drain out via the waste and then when you come to reuse the vehicle shut your boiler, shut your fresh, shut your waste, shut your taps and then put your pump, fill it with water, put your pump on you'll get a pre pressurised cold water feed on the hot, on the cold side first go to the hot side, it'll cough splutter and do what it did before to me when I opened the kitchen tap and it'll just shoot the water out as it's coughing and spurging the water until it's pressurised the flow of water through the boiler and then you'll get a pressurised flow of water but remember lift that up drain it off as this is a very expensive system should you leave the water in and break it to drain off the fresh it's through the floor here so there's a little hatch lift it up you've got your water pump under there as well so water pumps there you need to open the tank And in the tank in the corner there, you've got a red plug on the train. You need to put your hand in the tank and pull that out. Pulling that out will allow the water just to drain directly out underneath the van. But making sure that you drain that off if you've taken on contaminated water. If you're not using it for a couple of weeks, there's no reason why you should leave any water in it. You should just drain it off because it's going to go stagnant. And then if you are winterizing, just let all the water out because you wouldn't want the water to freeze in this plastic tank and split it because then it is an expensive job to get that dropped, get a new tank ordered and get the tank put back in. So just pull the plug out and allow everything out of the fresh tank. So in the wardrobe you've got your hanging rail, 
and some shelves at the bottom but you do have your Aldi expansion tank so as it's an Aldi system is more like radiators at home it runs anti-freeze through the pipes to provide you with the heat so when the anti-freeze heats up the radiator fins heat up which give you the heat you don't need to drain the anti-freeze off in the winter because it's anti-freeze it'll not freeze but what you need to do is you need to keep an eye on here when the system's off it'll always read lower than when the system's on because it is an expansion tank it expands the liquid so always run the system up first before topping it up with any more antifreeze because you could be overfilling it as you can see there it's just under max when the liquid's bubbling you fill it through here taking this off when it's off that's just a breather pipe but yeah Aldi expansion your Aldi antifreeze liquid has a five year lifespan so you may you will need to change this every five years once you get the Aldi liquid changed so change it five years time change it again you can get that done on your servicing with us as well if you choose to service with us or any motorhome and caravan player should be able to, to change and drain your Aldi system in the corner at the back of the van you've got your washroom so you've got your large shower cubicle again when you winterize if you just unscrew your shower head from your shower hose and lie the, sh the hose in the tray any water in the in the pipe there could freeze that's why if you lie in the tray leave your mixer tap open the water will just drain off via the two waste outlets on the shower tray clip your shower screen back when you travel just unclip this if you want to use your shower screen two towel or cord holders it's up to you what you use them for We've got a towel rail and a radiator so if you put your towels on there with the Aldi system on that should get nice and warm toilet is in here light toilet is underneath the sink you've got your hand basin with your soap dish and your toothbrush holder And that is your hot water getting warm there. On the window, blackout blind, clips together. You clip the grey clip to depart the two, and you do have a fly screen. And then open the window, release the tabs, push it out, tighten the black knobs to keep the window out on the stay. Loosen them, brings the window back in and always make sure that your windows and skylights are fully shut and secure before you start travelling. Finally, to operate your toilet, so press the button and you'll get your flush from your header tank, which is your pink liquid there. So you get some flush. So flush your toilet first. Always put some flush in to lubricate the seal between the cassette and the blade and then you want to open the blade so this is a blade handle so push the grey lever away from you you can now use the toilet after you've used the toilet you would go back in with flushing it again and then what you want to do is you want to bring the blade handle towards you closes the cassette and then it means should the cassette then need emptying it'll come up on here and if you're doing it in that routine you can go straight outside the van pull the cassette out take it to the waste disposal point otherwise if you've left the blade handle open the cassette won't come out and you'll need to come back in shut the blade to get the cassette out of the vehicle underneath your floor in the lounge which is your raised floor if you lift this compartment up here and just fold that back so just lift this section here so I'll just put you down lift this section you 
you've got your leisure battery compartment so this is you've got two banner 100 amp hour batteries in there so one battery should last you three days off grid if you use it correctly you've got two so you could probably get six but i'd say five more realistic figure of, of days days off grid fuse for your battery there another one in the middle there so you've got two battery fuses in here in the winter it's always We always recommend that you keep an eye on your batteries so either keep the vehicle on charge don't leave it on charge all the time put on a timer so it either comes on a couple of hours a day or it's on solidly for like three days off for four back on for three off for four or what you could do is you could take the batteries out the van if you put it in a storage yard put them on a charger in the house and just keep an eye on turn the charger on and off in the garage just so because if the batteries do drain and go completely flat, these new, some of these new batteries then don't take a charge. So then they're knackered and you need two new batteries. So just keep an eye on your batteries, especially in the winter um, when it's cold. And it would flatten your batteries a lot quicker. So behind the driver's seat, you've got this switch here. Which turns on the inverter, which is here. And that's the inverter socket. So if you were off grid and you weren't hooked up, you can turn on the switch and use a mains household appliance on 230 volt by using the inverter. But that's the only socket it runs. It doesn't run that socket. It doesn't run any sockets in the bedroom or further back. It's just one socket in the lounge. There's your inverter there. There in the corner is your trips. So along the top, you've got your trips on mains voltage and on the bottom, you've got all your 12 volt fuses. So carry some spare fuses just in case one does blow, you can replenish the fuse. And you've got a good amount of storage underneath here. Storage under this one with an on off switch for your 120 watt 12 volt point there. This boom arm table, just lifts out so you just unscrew it and lift this out or you can slide it out the way but that's good if you just want a little table for your cups of tea your beer your glasses of wine instead of bringing the big one out if you want to create the lounge into a double bed if you've got the additional guests as it is a four berth what you need to do is lift and slide off centre sections out to here then your infill cushions go in there upside down it's up to you if you want to then turn your base cushions upside down but we do recommend it as it gives you a flatter surface to sleep on so that is your bed made for a double bed so it's just a case of putting your infill cushions in and pulling the slats out from underneath and then you'll just push these away and that's how you would create your double bed so now in the cab to the right of the driver you do have your handbrake and then on the doors You've got electric windows, so you've got driver and passenger electric operated window and then electric mirror adjustment here, so top, bottom, so whether you're going for the top mirror or the bottom, bottom being the blind spot, you can adjust both mirrors, so you've got two mirrors on each side, choose which one you want and adjust it to suit. To black, the driver and passenger windows out on an evening or when you're parked up. What you can do is you can pinch and slide with the Remus car blinds and that's exactly the same for the passenger window and then for the windscreen it's fitted the same so pinch and slide in the middle pinch and slide magnetic strip in the middle so that they just magnetically connect together but what you'll need to do is if it's going to be windy potentially put elastic band or hair bubble round here and that'll stop the window window blinds from pinging straight open 
with the high winds. Headlight adjustment, wiper stalk with trip computer on the end so you can view your average and instant consumption, your distance travelled, your time travelled, your fuel usage, your fuel, how much fuel you've got left in your tank and then to reset it you just press and hold. SRC changes between radio, FM, AM, media, CD, there, skips the tracks, volume and mute, lights and the indicators and then you've got your cruise control being the bottom one. So to operate the cruise control all you need to do is switch it on, get the green light in the bottom of the dashboard, cruise on, get your speed, push up to set, push up to speed up, pull down to slow down, cancel by hitting the end of the stalk or hitting the foot brake and then to resume you press the end again and it'll set itself back to the last speed set before the engine was turned off. If the engine's been turned off, you need to then just push it back up and set it to the speed you want it to be. Rear view camera that's on all the time, as well as when you're in reverse. So six speed manual gearbox, lift the collar, pop it into reverse, it's the same picture. Locks and unlocks the doors. Rear fog lights when your lights are turned on and your heated mirrors. Two 12 volt points here, a lockable centre bin, another glove box and a glove box on the top which is heated and cooled via the air conditioning and you've got your sticker for your Bailey dimensions so Bailey approach autograph 740 so three and a half ton gross weight, mass and running order of 3000 and 42 kilograms and then you've got your tyre pressures on here. Top rate the carb heating so you've got your temperature on the outside ring on the left hand side and the fan on the in must be on at least one or more for the fans to work as well as the aircon and then on this side you've got your distribution so whether you wanted to go to face feet or screen and whether you're bringing fresh air in which is this one here or you recirculate air within the vehicle and then finally your radio turn it on it's just one more press one to six to save your favorite channel so just press and hold until it beeps no source available so there's no cd in so it would be a cd would be a media so you skips between FM, AM or media which is your CD. Audio you can change your settings, your bass and then you've got a menu which is all explained in the handbooks but it's a standard radio so just select your channels or pop a CD in should you want a CD when you lose FM frequency if you're going abroad or further afield. Turn your seats so to spin your seats driver and passenger all you need to do is pull this out, pull the seat forward, turn it round and then you can put both seats into the back of the van should you have a few people in your lounge or you just want to use the cab seats. You can sit in the cab seats looking further back at your TV on your little ledge there.